And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day, four score and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou hadest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh in Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of the Hebron before was Kajal Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims. And the land had rest from war. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When God gave us this thing last year as we were rounding up the conference, I only had a vague idea of what he had in mind. But the more I, pro I study, the more I am excited about God, God is about to do in our midst. I want to plead with you. This conference this year is not a bread and butter conference. And it's a conference where you must pay attention and you must be prepared to pray. Shout hallelujah. God is talking to us about serious matters. Serious matters. Not biscuit matters. Not indomie matters. Shout hallelujah. God is calling us to chew meat and to crack some bones in this conference. Mountains. The mountain we all know is the mountains we move. That's Biscuit teaching, Biscuit conference. If it was about moving mountains, that would have been a bread and butter conference. But this is about battles that possess mountains. It's not about moving mountains, it's about possessing mountains, dislodging giants and possessing mountains. When Joshua came, I mean, when Caleb came to Joshua. He will read that statement. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. That's, that's a military thing. That's a militant attitude. That's, that's someone that is coming to demand for what is this. That's someone that is prepared to fight. So we're not here to joke this week. We're not here to joke this week. I want to tell you something. I have what they call classified information. You know what is classified information? Uh -huh. Information that not everybody knows. But I'm going to release it to you. This week is your week. God is going to change some people's lives dramatically, permanently in the mighty name of Jesus. The sick will be healed totally. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Every captive will be set free in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Closed doors will open suddenly yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Yokes will be destroyed yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Prison doors will open in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Someone is going to catch unquenchable Holy Ghost fire this week. Yeah. 
came. Today, I want us to focus on this mountain. He was specific about a particular mountain. The land of Israel, by the time we are talking in Joshua chapter 14, they have destroyed Jericho, they have destroyed Ai, they have destroyed Bethel, they have killed so many kings and divided land. They were already settled in the land. But there was a particular portion of the land, particular specific place that God had promised that he was going to give to Caleb. Caleb already had a place to stay. But he said, no, no, no. There is a promise that is waiting for me to possess. This week, every promise of God, you must make up your mind. If God has promised it, I want to take it. You didn't hear me. Amen. I said, if God has promised it, you must be determined to take it. Because, because God promised you will see here that when a promise is made, you need to fight to take what has been promised. It takes a battle. What was significant about this mountain? Let me just give you a brief, a brief background. Hebron. There was a mountain in Hebron. When you read Genesis 13 verse 18, Genesis 13 verse 18, that was where Abraham built an altar in Hebron. He built an altar there. Abraham had built an altar there more than 430 years ago. When Sarah died, Abraham was still living in Hebron. Even though God had promised him, he said, as far as you see, I will give to you. Where Abraham was living was in Hebron. Let me jump. I'm sad to announce that as we are talking, Hebron is in the control of the Ishmaelites. Because Israel still lost their position. You will not lose your position. In Hebron today, there's a mosque on the site of this mountain where I'm talking about. Instead of a maybe a Jewish mosque, a Jewish temple <laughs> or a church. Sarah, when Sarah died, Abraham bought the land. He said, look, I'm a sojourner here. He bought it, made a deed. When you make a deed, it becomes your land. The only title deed Israel had to the land of Canaan was in Hebrew. That's the only place Abraham bought land with money, 30 pieces of silver. Pay, they signed. Handed it over to Abraham. The very Sarah there. Genesis 23. Read the entire chapter. Genesis 23. When you get to Genesis 25, verse 8 to 10, Genesis 25, verse 8 to 10, you discover that when Abraham died, that is where he too was buried. That is the place that Isaac lived, gave birth to Jacob and Esau. That is the place that Jacob, Isaac himself, was buried when he died. Genesis 35. 27 to 29. This may just be knowledge, but put it in one corner of your head. It's important. Jacob, when Jacob went to Egypt and he was about to die, he said, don't bury me in Egypt. They don't keep a, this kind of corpse in Egypt. Told his son, Joseph, go and bury me where my father is buried. That is our land. Don't, you don't put me in a strange land. Genesis chapter 50, verse 13. Genesis 50, verse 13. So much that when Joseph himself was dying, he said, don't bury me in Egypt. God is visiting you. You will take me back and bury me. That is the reason why even when they came to spy the land and everybody, you know there were 12. I don't believe that the 12 of them were all moving in a group with spies all moving in a group you understand so they scattered in the land i believe that caleb was the one who came to this place he went to trace this burial ground he got there 
He saw the giants. He saw the other kids. The giants were very strategic. There were many places in the lab, but they didn't stay there. They went to the most important place and took control. Take note of that too. There are many blessings you are receiving. But there is a most important blessing that is waiting that you must catch. There is you are there are areas that the devil has allowed you, but there is one place very key in your life that the devil has occupied, that the giants have occupied. We are dislodging them this week. In the mighty name of Jesus. So this mountain that Caleb was talking about was a strategic place, not just for him as a person, but for Israel. It was the core of their possession. I want to show you briefly from scripture some possessions that you must possess, some mountains you must possess. The first one is eternal life. If they look like what I was talking about here, I don't always want to take it for granted. This is a believer's meeting, but I never take anything for granted. Because actually, eternal life through Jesus Christ is a mountain you must possess. It's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to be coming to the redeemed Christian church of God. It's not enough to even be called a member. Oh, you are baptized. Oh, you are a worker. Oh, you are a pastor. Are you sure you have eternal life? I never take that for granted. Because I was preaching. I was already a preacher. And I didn't have eternal life. In fact, I had thought, I had led a Bible study on you must be born again. And I was not born again. I picked the manual somewhere. I read it. I prepared it. I taught it to other people. And they were clapping for me. That boy is very brilliant. And I didn't know what I was talking about. John 17 verse 3. John 17 verse 3 said, This is eternal life. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Eternal life is something you must possess. If, and you must not joke with it. I told you about how that they have they, they got that the anarchists were driven out here that time, but right now the Israelites have been driven out of Hebron again. So don't lose your eternal life. I want you to know that everything the devil is doing ultimately, ultimately, the plan of the devil. Is to send you to hell with him. Did you hear me? The ultimate plan of the devil is to take you and me along with him to hell. And your ultimate fight must be I will not follow the devil to hell. So in the course of your journey through this life when you face battles and you discover that this battle is about to take me to hell you have to change your fighting. Fight for your salvation. If you discover that somebody's is troubling you with unforgiveness so that both of you can go to hell. You know what I'm talking about? At least you have remembered, some of you may remember the story that our general overseer told us of those early years before he became the general overseer. One man was always fighting him, a pastor, an elderly pastor, fighting him, fighting him, fighting him. So he went to report to the general overseer, the general superintendent, then, this man, how did he offend him? Look, look at the letter he wrote to me. That Baba told him, go and beg the man. He said, ah, somebody offended me. He said, I should go and beg him. I said, go and beg him. He said, if not, because God has already told him, whatever this Baba asks you to do, you must do it. He said, with his PhD, he left the place angry. 
and went and begged that old man. The old man looked at him. He said, oh God, I've forgotten. I've forgotten you go. Some years later, the truth came out. The man said it openly. He said, I know I am going to hell. And you are among the people I want to go take with me. That was the reason he was fighting him. So that there can be animosity. Some of you, you are still fighting because somebody matched your leg. Somebody didn't greet you well. Keep, keep, keep doing they didn't greet you well and go to hell. I won't be there with you. I'll, you'll be looking at me from heaven and you will remember that it was just because of that sister, that sister that was always looking for my trouble inside church. She was always looking for my trouble inside church. Ignore people. Face where you are going. I am on my way to heaven. When I meet people who are not ready to go, I ignore them. There are some people as I'm standing here. There is nothing they will do on earth that will bother me. If they like, they should come and stand here and be insulting me, put their hands, their fingers into my eye. I will not, I will not respond. I've already ignored them as inconsequential in my journey of life. I refuse to be offended by their misbehaviors because I know their strategy. Let's not talk about sin that will take you to hell. You must insist on your salvation. When the devil throws peanuts at you, in different different places, compromise in different different places because of Kobo Kobo. I always talk about this Kobo Kobo thing. I don't know why people like all those small small Kobo 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 all around. Some of you don't know what is Kobo is. Now even Naira has become Kobo. So call up all of them Kobo Kobo. Fighting over mundane uh, small small change. No. What is the mountain you must possess? Deliverance from the power of darkness. Colossians 1 verse 13. Colossians 1 13 says, God has delivered us from the power of darkness. Not only did he deliver us, he translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I will not allow the devil to rule over me. It's a determination that every child of God must make. I can't be a slave to the devil. Anywhere you find the devil operating in your life, you stamp him down. Doesn't matter which way he's coming. You know, those days we talk about witches and wizards. But some people are still afraid of witches and wizards. I don't want to go there. Last year we talked about those things. Today I'm just because I'm connecting this year with last year. That's why I'm still doing all this most of bread and butter before we move. The devil must not oppress you. And when you find the devil oppressing you, when you find a, any manifestation in your life, in your family, around you that is not of God, battle it. The Bible says, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to him. Don't give him a space to operate. Don't give him a foothold in your life, in your behavior, in your habits, in any area of your life at all. Don't give a devil permission. You know, some of us are still permitting the devil in small, small areas, small, small areas, small, small areas. No, 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 no. You must live your life above, far above the devil. Mountains you must possess, healing and health. Brethren, and I know sometimes I'm a bit worried now that I'm getting to know people more and interacting with you more and beginning to know your personal struggles with your health. I don't want anybody at any time I thought to think I'm, I'm being specific about you. But I tell you as a child of God, battle health, battle sickness. Don't ever 
Don't ever get to that point where you agree with the devil that man must be sick. Did you hear that? It doesn't matter how long. Continually consider sickness as a stranger in your life. Keep fighting sickness until you win victory. Stand in faith, stand in prayer, stand in everything you know to maintain your health. Because it's a promise of God. It's a mountain that is yours. It's a possession that is yours. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, Matthew 8, 16 and 17, and when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. All. Jesus has always been the business of healing. All. Without exception. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He took them upon himself, he carried them on his back. So you have a right to demand the mountain. You must cry, give me this mountain, this mountain of head. I must have it. I'm going to jump. God wants to meet all your needs. I know some of you like me have been told that oh, all this prosperity preaching is not biblical. I know many of the much of what they call prosperity preaching is not of God. I know that. But it doesn't mean that the truth of the scriptures is not there. I Psalm 23 verse 1 Psalm 23 verse 1 say the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. Never accept lack as normal. It is Jesus with his mouth that said in Matthew 6, that 1 to 33. Matthew 6, that 1 to 33. Take no thought, say, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Where with that shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that he hath need of these things. God knows what you need. He said, I know you need food. I know you need drink. I know you need cloth. And I want to add, he knows you need house. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. If these things are going to be added, then lack has no provision. There is no space for lack. When you find lack in your life, back to it. Let me tell you the truth. When the Bible says, thou shalt not borrow, but thou shalt lend to nations. It's not just a blessing. It is a commandment. You didn't hear that. <laughs> it's a decree. And I'm telling you this without a hint of boast. If you can meditate on that and get light and battle it, you will not live on borrowing anymore. Shout hallelujah. To God. It's taking me there gradually. Even legitimate official loans, I don't want them. It's a matter of growth. I'm not, this is not about sin now. It's about growth. It's about possessing mountains. A pastor. I don't want to mention his name because some of you know his name. In this same church, preached one day and said, anything official, I don't want it. He said, I don't want official card. Card that the day I'm transferred, I cannot carry. I don't want it. 
God, give me my own. That day my eyes opened. Have you seen me with Obishaka? I want what the day I'm bleeding back with. I'll tag along and be going with it. Not something that the day I'm going to say, ah, oh man, I'm going to miss this motive. No. He's able to do it. Let me boast a little because of my God. When I resumed last year, I mean, two years ago. It's almost, it's almost two years ago. Can you see that? Time is good. They was like, Pastor, hey, let's buy this. I said, will it be my house? They said, no, it's going to be for your house. I said, maybe it's going to be in my house, but not my own. Keep it. Do you even have the money for it? You don't say, keep it. Let's buy my trash for you. I said, will it be my own? I said, no, when we're going. I said, Every, everything you see in my house, it belongs to this boy. your money. Use it for plant church. Leave me alone. You can grow. Oh man. I, someone will possess that. I want to grow to the point where I will not be collecting salary again. I, I, I'm still growing. Oh, you don't know. There are some There are some people already there. I want to catch up with them. Is Baba Debo collecting salary from you? He's the one sponsoring the job. I said, my general was said sponsor. Why can't I also? So that's why small, small. Sometimes I would just, in my own little ways, try to see that sponsor small. I want to grow. Mountain, you must possess the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and that's where we are actually going. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. In Luke 24 verse 49. Luke 24 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father who you. It's a promise. When I remember his promises, I shout hallelujah. When I remember his promises, I shout hallelujah. Why do you shout hallelujah? Because when he has promised... He has done his part. What is left is for me to take that promise. So he made a promise. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. This week is our week of tarrying. That's why I told you someone is going to catch unquenchable fire this week. And I'm going to be that person. He said, "How oh, you will be endued with power from on high." For the disciples, it was ten days. They waited for ten days. Our own is just six days, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be ten days. In fact, it doesn't have to be the six days. We did before that six days. <laughs> Even this night, someone is already beginning to catch fire. You need a food. Look! 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 The Holy Spirit is available. You know, they say it is like water. And you can drink as much as you want. One day I was praying and God surprised me. He said, bro, what not bro? I always call myself bro. God doesn't call me bro. He said, my friend, let me tell you something. The anointing you have now, that's what you have desired. You are at the level where you have desired. So when you desire more, you will get more. Ah, that day I check myself. I said, but this is not what I want. I said, but that is what that is the level of your hunger. If you hunger more than this, you will drink more. Ah. So the matter doesn't depend on God, it depends on me. Because I was thinking that. It's God that is not releasing this power. Me, I'm praying. He's not releasing it. He said, no. You are only taking as much as you want. When you want more, you will take more. This week, if you want a cup, you will get a cup. 
If you want a liter, you will get a liter. If you want a, a gallon, you will get a gallon. If you want a drum, you get a drum. If you want a river, you get a river. If you want rivers, you get rivers. But you see, you can't tell me you want. And when it is time to pray, you pray two minutes, you stop. That's a sign that you just want a cup. Your hunger determines how much you chase after it. The disciples shot themselves. Ten days. They didn't even know how long they were going to stay. Because he didn't tell them. He said, just stay there. And they stay there. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The reason God wants to give us this power. Is because he has given us a work. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. Is not just for the sake of feeling good with the Holy Ghost. He says so that you can witness. And I'm, it is now I'm actually about to start preaching. <laughs> but as I'm about to start I will soon random. The mountain God has given us to possess is the land. A physical land. Everywhere a man is placed, he is placed there to take that place for Jesus. I was talking with a friend yesterday and I said, one reason why I'm not so bothered about going to America is in many, many ways I keep telling myself, it's not me that will take America for Jesus. There are Americans. I was not born here by mistake. If I leave this land, who will come and take this one for Jesus? Is it Americans that will come and take him for Jesus? As you are going to hear, by the grace of God, Jesus does not return tomorrow. The headsman you see all over is because we didn't take the land. Souls of men in the land have been taken over by anarchy, by giants. In these hard economic times, when you close service today, take a walk around Makodi, you will still see people drinking beer by the roadside with this no money. Some people didn't come this evening because they don't have transport to come to church. Some of the people that are drinking, it's not as if they are richer than you. They are doing book me time. Drinking on credit. Because the devil has already put them in, in a drunkenness bondage. That's why when Naftak said they should stop doing such alcohol, you saw the protests all over Nigeria. They want to make it available. So that the devil can capture more people. Those people will continue to go deeper and deeper until you arise and rescue them. That's the land. The other day, I watched a video. One man of God said he was on a plane with Baba Deboe and he asked him, thank God this is an opportunity. Baba, what is the role of Christianity in the politics of Nigeria? Baba looked at him and said, eh? let's pray that God will give us more righteous people. And the man said he thought that was too simple. Like they always believe our Baba is too, it's too simple. He said, but when he talked more about it, he remembered what they taught him in school. That if there are armed robbers in a land and they want to choose a leader among themselves, who would they choose? Policeman. <laughs> if you want to have righteous leaders, where are you going to start? Righteous people. 
It is only righteous people that will choose righteous leaders. So when you are praying, Father, give us a righteous leader. Where is it going to get a righteous leader from? Who will choose a righteous leader for you? How many of you are righteous? If there is a free and fair election, how many of you are righteous compared to the unrighteous ones? And if there is no free and fair, so when they are snatching ballot, how many of you will join them to snatch ballot to vote for a righteous man? But if those ballot snatchers have become righteous, there will be nobody to snatch ballot. Did you hear that? The key to changing society is to change people. We souls. During the election, some believers who have become activists make us believe that the only the we, we church we are we, we should go into politics, we should take over this country. Let me tell you the truth. The only way to possess the land is the Bible way. Win souls. In those days, I read about a man of God entered a town, had a three weeks revival. At the end of the three weeks, police didn't have a job. Because all the notorious criminals became born again. The doctors had no work. Hospitals were empty. People were healed. That's an example of what God can do. That's an example of God, what God will. I didn't say can you I said will you. And who is he going to use? Who is he going to use? Remember the hymn. Remember the hymn. We are able to go up and take this nation. We are able to go up and heal all the sick. That's why I said this weekend. This week. It's not bread and butter matter. God must give us fire to win souls. Beginning from our homes. Husbands must be saved. Wives must be saved. Children must be saved. Siblings must be saved. Relations must be saved. Through you. It's a mountain you must possess. You know, you know, you know we get to a point where all these uh, family quarrels make us forget that we are in the family to save souls. As on the way in my house, I don't like their behavior. But I don't bother about what they do. Why? I want them born again. I know that the reason they are doing what they are doing is because they are not saved. That's why they can misbehave, they can insult me, they can fight, but when they call me, I say they need money, I send money. Why? <laughs> I want to keep the door open so I can preach to them. I ignore their misbehavior because I am crying to God, don't let this one go to hell. Anybody connect to it, connected to you by blood, remember, they are part of the people you are going to give account to when you get to heaven. It was not by accident that you were born in that family with that nuclear or extended. In your neighborhood. I'm already leaving scriptures because you know them. Jesus promised to save us and our household. Acts 1, verse 8, say, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where you are. In your when I was a student, I announced to myself, I am in this school to win souls. My studentship is the excuse to win souls. Because I can't stay on campus if I'm not a student. I'm here to shine, to shine light. And sometimes I remember, I see some people who me, oh, you are a pastor. When, they tell, when I tell them I'm a pastor, they say, no wonder. Even from school, we knew that. That's how it will end. Maybe today we start up. And then there are some of them. They meet me and we join. I am also a pastor. 
You know that time, all those people were telling us we didn't need to take it seriously. But Holy Spirit caught me after I left. Those words were not in vain. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When I finished my youth service, I worked in a company for three years. There was this young man. Oh man, he knows how to steal company property. And I'm always preaching to him. Brother, don't do that. Sometimes he will look at me and say, how are you surviving? What they are paying us is not enough. They didn't pay salary for two months. I said, God is taking care of me. So when they put us in the same team, I told him, I said, just make sure I don't know what you do. I don't see it. Because I will not report you, but if they catch you, and I'm asked to write a report, I will write the truth of what I know. So just make sure I don't know. So that when I say I don't know, I am telling the truth. Because something happened and they sack him. Because they, the company too knew what he was doing. So, you know, when they know what you are doing and they don't have evidence, they'll be waiting for the day evidence to come. So there was a little reorganization. So the user would like reorganization to drop him. One day I saw him. He said he has gone to Bible college. He said, you? Bible college. He said, that's what I came to tell you. He said, I had a dream. But he said, it was a vision. He said, in that vision, we were on a long line to heaven. And I was behind you. And when we got to the gate, they opened for you to enter. And as I wanted to put leg, they pushed me back. And they locked the gate. And I opened the door. I opened my eyes. He said, hey, Gucci, all the things you tell me is true. He said, I'm in the Bible college now. You are there to win souls. Where you wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, office, market, wherever you are in your compound, you are there to do what? That's the mountain you must possess. Let me conclude. When heaven is measuring your success. It is in the souls you have for the kingdom of God. If you became a billionaire on earth, what those billions, the souls that those billions produce is what will be counted in heaven. I love this. I say this repeatedly. There are testimonies that will not be shared in heaven. Oh, brethren, praise the Lord. God just provided for me 2026 Mercedes Formatic. The one where they see the plan, you don't get them already. In 2024. You can only share those testimonies here in the church. We will shout and we will go outside, we will rub our hands on the car and also claim our own in the name of Jesus. You can't share that testimony in heaven. Heaven will be looking at you like, what's wrong with you? God? Everything thinks. You don't talk about such things here, man. The testimony you can share in heaven is, if you use that car to win a soul, if that car produced a soul, you can talk about it in heaven. If it didn't produce a soul, it is our earthly testimony. Brethren, after much prayer and fasting and trusting the Lord, the Lord has blessed us with quadruple. Four children and one. Three boys and one girl. We can share those testimonies here. If those children don't get to heaven, no testimony. Did you hear that? Anything that does not produce souls is wasted. Wasted level, wasted effort, wasted investment, wasted life. A life that is not possessing the land for Jesus is wasting. Wasting. Many of us were here. We are already wasting away. Wasting away. One day. One lady came to my office crying, crying, and I was comforting her with everything I know to do as a pastor. I'm tired of something. Husband is not coming. And this is, this is, see me. I'm wasting away. 
I comforted her. And after she left, the Holy Spirit said, Why is she not crying that she's not of no use to the kingdom of God? I told you we are cracking bones this year, this week. Those things are important, but they are not as important as we are permitted to create our English when the need arises. When you can't find English, you manufacture it to say what you want to say. If a woman has a husband, has children, feeling the earth, but is not contributing to the kingdom, is a wasted life. Must I go and empty handed? Must I meet my Savior soon? Not one soul with wish to greet him. Must I empty handed? So when Caleb was saying, Give me this mountain, he said, This thing is what God promised me. And I must take this thing. If we capture this entire land, where is the deed that this land belongs to Israel? The enemy has it. We must take it back. That was as critical as it was. You are going to rise up on your feet. God said something to me this evening and I wrote it down. He said there is a difference between being withdrawn from battle and a triumphant return. And I ask myself, what is that? You know, some people, they are children of God, though, when they have stayed on earth, and the devil has bashed them right, left, center, and they are not making progress, they are not adding to the kingdom of God. When God determines that if we leave this man here, he's not adding value, we may lose him also. He may go to hell, we may lose him. They will withdraw you from. It's like a wounded soldier that cannot fight again. What do they do to them? Withdraw. So I don't want to be withdrawn from it. When you have fought a good fight of faith like Paul, you have finished your course. A head spot is waiting for you. Crowns. You can do a triumphant return home. Make up your mind how you want to go home. Is it by being withdrawn or by a triumphant return? Can I give you a chance to pray? This week, we announced that there will be prayer from 2 to 4. That prayer is open. Because now we are going to pray for a few minutes and it will be late. I will close. If you come early, stay here and cry. When you go this night, this is a week to tarry. Your life must change. Oh, Jesus. Lift your voice to him. Worship him first of all. Caleb said, The Lord has kept me. These 45 years, he kept me. In fact, he said, These 85 years he has kept me. That you are still alive means it's not late. No, 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 no. You can still be useful to God. Thank you, Lord, that I'm still alive. Oh, Baba. Thank you, thank you, thank you that I'm here. To be in this conference, that I am here to, to be the one to even preach this. That means I am I am still able to collect this mountain. This mountain is still collectible since I'm alive. Since I'm alive. Since I'm alive. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Lord. 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 We have mentioned mountains that you must possess. And if you are here and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, then the first mountain is eternal life. Why don't you ask God to forgive you your sins and write your name in the book of life? And then maybe you, you, your name was written, but you can see that you're already backsliding. And there will be a restoration. Some things are already taking you to hell. Some human beings being used of the devil are already leading you to hell. Some issues are already on pushing you to hell. Re retrace your steps. And I'm going to give you time to cry. To possess mountains. 
the mountain of your health, you must possess it. The mountain of satanic oppression. If you see the devil is still oppressing you in an area of life, tonight you can deal with it. But remember, above all, I want you to cry for fire. Jesus said, I mean, John the Baptist said about Jesus that he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Baptism with the Holy Ghost makes you speak in tongues. <laughs> tongues is not enough. And my cry today is, Lord, take me beyond tongues. Give me fire. Give me fire to win souls. Yes, Lord. Lift your voice to God and say, Father, deliver me from sin. Deliver me from Satan. Make me an instrument of deliverance in my generation. In the mighty name of Jesus, please pray. My Father and my God, I come to you, Lord. Sin must have no place in my life anymore. Please deliver me totally, totally, totally. Rescue me from the hand of the devil completely. And don't stop there. As long as I'm alive, let me be an instrument of deliverance. Let me be the vessel to rescue me from men from sin. Let me be the vessel to rescue me from the hand of Satan. Yes, Lord. In Jesus. Mighty name we are praying. Yes. Say, Father, Father, heal me totally. Yes. And make me an instrument of healing in my generation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Cry to the Almighty God. Oh, my Father and my God. Only sickness dwell in any part of my body. I am. By your stripes, I have been healed. That's the mountain I possess. In the name of Jesus, sickness and disease, you got no space in my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's the dwelling place of God. Quicken my mother body by your spirit. Give me life my body by your spirit. And then don't stop here. Make me an instrument of healing others in my generation. An instrument of healing. An instrument of healing that. Make me an instrument of healing, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. An instrument of healing everywhere I go. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You say, Father, please fill me with the Holy Ghost and power. Make me an instrument of salvation in my generation. Let me be full of the power of the Holy Baptize me with fire. You promised it. You promised Lord. You promised me. And you don't lie. I've come to tarry for fire. Fire! Take me beyond tongues. Give me fire. To take this land. Fire to take Bayway. Fire to take my nation. Fire long. To begin in my Jerusalem, to Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. Yes, Lord. 
you are doing it for me, you are doing it for us this week, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You will say, Father, please make me a mighty soul winner in my generation. Now, listen here. Let me turn many. Let me turn many from darkness to light. You are going to say it according to your capacity. You can say, let me turn hundreds. Let me turn thousands. Let me turn millions from darkness to light. Pray in the name of Jesus. Make me an, a mighty soul winner in my generation. A mighty soul, oh Baba. On that day when the saints shall march in. I want to march in with my millions of God. When the saints go marching in it, on that parade, on that parade, Lord, oh Lord, don't let me come empty handed. No, 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 no. Don't let me come with excuses. Baba, don't let me come with a thing. Don't let me come with a trick. Daddy. Daddy, it's a promise. It's a promise. Let me come with my millions, millions, millions of souls, millions of souls, millions of souls, millions of souls, millions of souls. Let me come with them. I must not come empty handed. I will not be withdrawn from battle. I will return home triumphantly, 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 oh God, with my millions. After plundering the kingdom of darkness, Father, I want to plunder hell. I want to plunder hell in my generation. Fire to plunder hell. must be in church. We want to move men from beer palace to church. We want to move men from protests to church. We want to move men from death to in churches. We want to move men from idol worship to the worship of the living God. We want to move men from darkness to light. Father, lay your hands on us. Lay your hands on me, Lord. Lay your hands on me, Lord. Take a hold of me. Give me fire. Give me fire. Give me fire. Thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Daddy, that's the reason you called us this week. That we will tarry in your presence. That you will endure us with power from on high to go into this land and possess it. To take this mountain for Jesus. To dislodge satanic giants. And we erect the name of Jesus. Beginning from our homes to the ends of the earth. Daddy, I ask that you will begin to unveil this body to every heart that has come under the influence of your word tonight. Do it yourself, Holy Spirit. Do it yourself, Holy Spirit. This week, sit upon our lives. Brood upon our lives. Hey, brood upon our lives. Produce fire. Produce light. Make us burning and shining light in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go, burden to pray, release upon us. 
and as we pray, answer us. That in this week, whatsoever is a personal mountain your children need to possess, together it shall be possessed in the name of Jesus. We dislodge sickness and disease from the name of Jesus. By the time this week is over, let them see the body lifted. Let them see the yoke destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Anything that will hinder us from proclaiming Jesus in the land, anything that will hinder us from demonstrating Jesus in the land, this week, remove it in the name of Jesus. And everything we need to do it, release upon us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.